Hello and welcome to the World Food Program cooking demo and discussion as part of the 2021 Global Engagement Summit. As you may know, this past year, the World Food Program was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. As the UNA USA Youth Observer to the United Nations, my role is to listen to our youth members as they share their perspectives, hopes, and passions related to the United Nations. During my conversations with young people, they shared that they are looking for natural and organic choices, that they are comfortable paying more for eco-friendly products and seek locally sourced and sustainable products to decrease their carbon footprint. Today, I am so thrilled to introduce a chef who completely lives by and subscribes to the idea of sustainability. And that's chef Arthur Potts Dawson, based in London. He's the perfect fit within this theme of moments to movements solidarity for sustainability, because his pension and desire to start a sustainable food revolution is seen through his actions. Chef Dawson is dubbed the original green chef by celebrity chef Jamie Oliver and is currently serving as a world food program advocate. From rooftop gardens to low energy refrigerators and warmeries that turn food waste into compost, Chef Dawson's restaurants Acorn House and Waterhouse, both in London, prove that it makes sense to be sustainable. Arthur is the lead presenter in the new launched Food FM and beyond the UK, Chef Dawson has partnered with the United Nations World Food Program, launching the Stop the Waste campaign to publicly gain awareness on food waste. He has also joined the UN's Act Now climate campaign to inspire people through his recipes and cooking to enjoy sustainable, climate conscious and delicious foods. I'm so excited now to turn it over to Chef Dawson to lead us through a demo featuring a recipe highlighting the delicious possibilities as an alternative to food waste. Chef Dawson, over to you. Hello everyone, and thanks to you Dustin for introducing me and my work towards a more sustainable food system. I'm here in the farm, the community farm near Bristol. And the idea is, is I want to talk about valuing food more. It's not just about food waste that's in the fridge, it's about understanding where our food is coming from. And these plants, so this is a Russian purple kale, but we're going to be making a pasta with Cavallo Nero, and that's a brassica. But I want to highlight that waste begins in the field, because if you don't understand where your food comes from, then you don't care for it, you don't respect it. And here it is. It was literally freezing in that field. But here's some of the brassica, some of the kale, and some of the Cavallo Nero from the farm. And we're gonna be talking about how to cook it and make sure that we use all of it up. So it's not just about the food waste that's come from my fridge today, but it's also waste that could also have been created in the farm. Now, I'm delighted to have been invited by the United Nations Association of the USA to share a cooking demo for the World Food Programme and the Global Engagement Summit. Uh, today I'm talking about food waste and trying to avoid it. Um, a lot of the story that I tell is not about food waste from the fridge, although we are going to be talking about a bit of old cheese and some old dried mushrooms from my cupboard and uh, you know, making sure that I use all of my produce. I, I believe that food waste comes from a, um, a lack of understanding and a lack of people valuing or not valuing their food. So knowing where it comes from, from the field, how it grows, who picked it, how far it's traveled, how much you paid for it. And if you knew all of that, you wouldn't throw any of it away because you'd have so much love and respect for it. So the recipe I'm gonna to cook today is founded on me connecting to the local farm, it's only 10 minutes away from here, and talking about the food as it comes out of the ground and making sure that people understand and value their food. So I'm gonna be doing a Cavallo Nero and kale, Russian kale pasta. Um, I've got pasta in my, free, uh, in my cupboard. I've got some old cheese. Check this one out. A little bit moldy around the edges, but we're gonna grate that off and put that in. I've got a little bit of old Parmesan that's gonna go in there too. Here's some old cheeses. And here is uh, some mushroom. Now, uh, when mushrooms come in during the autumn, we're now in the middle of winter, but in the autumn time, the mushrooms, when there's so many, I dry them. So these are just some dried wild mushrooms. These ones, I think, are a little bit of a mix of porcini and girole. And I'm gonna reconstitute them now with a bit of water. And I'm gonna use that water to make my pasta sauce with. And then, of course, just check this out. This is um, garlic, but look at it, it's old. 
This is garlic that, uh, this wasn't sitting in the back of my fridge, it was actually sitting in my fruit bowl. Um, and because I use so much garlic, this is the last of them, but normally you'd probably throw that away. Now this garlic I'm going to use, I'm going to peel it, I'm going to chop it up, I'm going to put it in my pasta. I'm going to flavour it with some fennel. Now these are fennel seeds, uh, they're not going off, they're dried, but they're um, good for making flavour. And then I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil, and look at this, just a little bit of old butter that's sitting in an old packet in the fridge. Get it out, get it into your pasta, use it all up, don't throw it away. So, very simple, it's a vegetarian pasta with kale and cavallonero, but I'm gonna use all the cavallonero stalks and kale stalks and I'm gonna roast them. So this is very simple, it is kale with cavallonero, cheese, mushroom, pasta. Fantastic, but we need to start. And we're going to start with not wasting any of these. So the kale, I'm just gonna show you what I do, is just trim down off the stalk, because I'm gonna roast this stalk with some garlic and a little bit of fennel seed. Now, just take it, so it's got a little bit of extra zip on the base here. Put that in a roasting tray. Take all of these bits off. So normally, this stalk would be thrown away, but we're going to eat it. Put that in there, and do you see that? Very simple. This is delicious. So put that there. Now I'm going to, into this water, boil the kale. And that's gonna make the beginning of my pasta sauce. Just take your knife and just run it down the edge of these, you can see what I'm doing. So we get these lovely long pieces, a little bit like a drumstick, right? Just cut that in half put that on there and we're going to roast these off and they're going to be the garnish for our pasta dish. So we are not going to throw anything away today, even to the point of using our kale and cavolo nero stalks. So at the moment I've got some pasta water boiling and I'm going to use that water to reconstitute my mushrooms. So let's just show you how to do that. Here's my hot water. I take my mushrooms, which are dry. You can buy dry mushrooms in, in a packet, but it's nice to be able to dry them. If you've got too many in your fridge. So if I show you, look at this. There, they're just gonna be soaking now. But if I show you in here, you know you've got a packet of, you buy a packet of mushrooms and you don't eat them and you don't get around to eating them, then just take a few mushrooms, the ones that you're not eating, slice them and leave them in your airing cupboard or in a, in a very, very cool oven and just let them dry. Slice them and dry them. And it's vital that we look at food waste as one of the ways of us reducing our carbon impact on the planet. And my role as advocacy chef for the World Food Programme is to try and get the world back on track for the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. You know, we're trying to aim for zero hunger. You know, it's a big task ahead of us, but you know, zero hunger is a part of one of the sustainable development goals. And this year, the Food Systems Summit for the United Nations is really gonna focus on how food can heal the planet, can actually make us a lot more aware of our food systems and how we need to look into the future, but act now. And food is a, is a vital tool for both nutrition, for being healing our bodies, but also for healing the planet. Um, and you know, it's, it's recipes like this, if you can use everything in your cupboard and everything that you've got locally and not disrespect the food, um, it's a good way to, to changing the food systems around us. There's a lot of food waste created from a lack of understanding of our food systems. And it's not just here in the UK where food waste is a problem. Food waste can happen, you know, in the UK, food waste happens on the plate. But in developing countries, food waste happens post-harvest. You know, I've been to countries with the World Food Programme. Um, I've visited you know, school feeding programmes in Ethiopia, where we're looking at harvesting corn and beans and pulses, and the wastage between harvest and actually it being processed is massive, sometimes nearly 40%, and very, very high wastage. So sometimes it's uh, food waste at the beginning of the process, sometimes it's food waste at the end of the process. And we need to close all of these wasted gaps and make our systems much more secure and, and, and resilient to 
the problems that we're going to be facing in the future where we're going to have a lot more people on this planet and we need to be looking after our food a lot better. So I'm going to be cooking off my Cavolo Nero now, but there's a little trick to the Cavolo Nero. Have a quick look at this. This is a bird's eye chilli. I talked about a little bit of spice here with our fennel and a little bit of flavour here from our chilli. Spicy, fennel -y, and nice and chilli. So I'm going to put the chilli into the water. And the water I'm going to be cooking my Cavolo Nero in. And I'm also going to put two heads of garlic. Remember the garlic, I've peeled this off from this rather wild looking. And look, remember, if this garlic starts to do this, don't throw it away, plant it. Put in a little plant put, put it in your garden, uh, put it in a roadside verge, but let it grow. And this is uh, two heads of garlic going in. And as this water begins to boil, I'll put the cavalanero in because I'm gonna puree the cavalanero and it's gonna coat the pasta with this delicious dark green flavor. Now, here we are. This are, these are the kale and cavolo nero stalks. Just grind up the fennel. A little bit of salt. Okay, so take a little bit of olive oil. Just coat the stalks first and then sprinkle your fennel. You want that fennel to stick to these stalks. So this is going into the top of the oven at about uh, 200 degrees, maybe 220. And my water is now back up to the boil. Let's get this rolling. And I'm gonna cook my cavalanero. Every part of the cavalanero I'm cooking, going into this water with a little bit of chili, a little bit of garlic. So many people ask me, what is it that an individual can do to make a difference, certainly around food waste? And it's these kind of ideas. Yeah, using up old dried mushrooms or drying your mushrooms if you've got too many, using up the stalks of your kale, making sure that you love the food that comes out of the ground and know where it comes from. There are organisations like the, the United Nations Association of the USA, I mean, you've got 20,000 members. I mean, that is, if each one of you says something to the person that you live with or the person that you work with, you're talking about doubling the amount of people just to understand food waste and the issues around it. So, you know, it has a big impact, and I think it'll have a big impact on America if you say something about food waste. Um, so, making sure that you, you're understanding the food system is, is vital to get the Food System Summit, you know, really focused on. And also the Sustainable Development Goals, you know, the, all 17 of them is a long list. It's, um, you know, the World Food Programme is going a long way to helping support the, the, the SDGs, but we all have to do our part, especially with the UNA. I'm just gonna put this into the pan. You see that starting to cook off. So just strain off the juice, making sure you're not putting any grit or dirt into the sauce. And there we are. Now there's a few bits and pieces in here that I don't want to throw away, so I'm making sure that all of this comes out. See, sometimes you'll see a little bit of dirt or the bottom of the mushroom that has to come off. So I'm gonna, and, and quite a lot of the time, there are unavoidable wastage, but rather than throwing lots of the mushroom away, just trim off a little bit. You don't need to throw it all away. Just take off that little bit of the dirty bit. That's all you need to take off. Now, these are all washed, ready to go, good. Okay, so at the moment, we've only generated this much waste, okay? So, let's move these mushrooms over. Our pasta water is on. I'm gonna put my pasta in now because this sauce is halfway made. Let's get our pasta into the water. Now I'm pretty hungry, so I'm gonna put in about three handfuls for me and three handfuls for the wonderful camera person working so hard behind the scenes. So that's probably enough pasta for us. Remembering if you make too much, put it in the fridge, heat it up tomorrow, take it with you to work. We have got dried mushrooms cooking out, and I want to cook down the flavour of these mushrooms. Lovely. Now I'm going to put, here's a little, put my kale in. I just want to chop up this Russian kale because I want it to, what I've chosen to use is the fusilli, 
And fusilli is this sort of spiral pasta. And that spiral is designed to hold sauce. So it's very juicy. And so we want to make the sauce able to spiral into, get into all of the cracks of the pasta. So this is the kale. I'm just going to chop this up. Remembering that we've got these lovely bits of mushroom and they're really kicking off now. The mushrooms are coming back to life. We, we dry them, we put them to sleep. Now we're waking them back up again. Okay, I'm just squashing it down, stirring it around. And you know, waste isn't always about food. Waste can be a waste of time, a waste of energy. And quite a lot of the time, if you pick up your pan and do this, you're wasting energy. Keep your pan in there and just stir it around. Everyone does this flash stuff and flippy, flippy. Put it down, keep the heat on, otherwise you're just wasting heat. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to make a Cavallo Nero paste. So have a look at this, where's my jug? There we go. I'm going to lift the Cavallo Nero out of this boiling water into this plastic jug. Making sure you get the garlic and the chilli. So that is the Cavallo Nero, fresh from the farm, nothing wasted. And let's have a little look. I'm just going to blitz this a tiny bit. Just using a simple hand blender. Very, very good. Okay, so then we have this gentle, quite thick, but it's a Cavallo Nero sauce. And that's got garlic, it's got chili, it's got a little bit of salt in it. Now, my mushroom, I wish you could smell this, it's just this rich, deep flavor of autumn. And, and garlic, you know, it's interesting, when the garlic starts to grow, it becomes milder, it's not as strong, that central bit of the garlic. So, now, you see, cook out the liquid, of cooking out the flavor so we get nice and intense. And I'm going to add my chopped kale. You know, what I usually do, is when I've cooked my vegetables, either a cavallo nero or spinach or anything, in the hot water, I let it cool down, and that water, when it's cold, or at least room temperature, can go into the garden and just water, so you don't need to even throw, throw your water away. Okay, let's stir this pasta. Great. So, now the proof is in the tasting. Let's have a quick taste of this. So clean, so earthy. So I need to put some seasoning in. And that just that little bit of chili is really coming through now. And what I love about this cavalier is it gets lovely and shiny. You can catch a little bit of the, the shininess from there. Now I need to get a little grater. So now we need to grate the cheese and you know make sure you use all of the cheese. And you know, the cheese, uh, the top of the Parmesan, I always put into my soup bases, and right at the last minute, just pull the Parmesan out, it's Parmesan rind. But normally you get the lovely flavor imparted by the, um, it's sort of almost an umami flavor. Now, with all of this talk about waste, um, how about you share a dish that you create from your food waste? Um, hashtag stop the waste. Show me a dish, connect. Connect with us and let us know what it is that you've done um, with your food waste and um, turned into a dish. So, um, you know, post it on the UN World Food Programme or the UNA, UNA USA and just get us to see what you did. But make sure you use hashtag stop the waste. Photos, stories, videos, tell us what you've done. But don't waste your cheese. Look at this. Hold. I'm, I'm even going to keep the rind on. I'm going to grate that into here. Don't waste it. Use everything you got. I love using these old bits of cheese because they've got such a punchy flavour. Right, we've got this lovely green sauce. I have to check again the seasoning because I'm a chef. Mm. And as a chef, we always need more salt. Keep it going. Now, these days, we need to probably be talking a little bit more about activism. Take action in your food system. Be an activist. Make your voice heard. Say something about the food system around you. And put it up as hashtag stop the waste. Get your message out there. 
Now, 20,000 United Nations advocates and associates in the USA, you know, there's, there's a lot of people making a lot of noise. So, you know, stand up and say what you need to say about these food systems around us. So, now we're gonna finish off. One of the things I do have, uh, which is sitting on my table here, is a little bit of lemon. And I don't wanna waste any of it, so I'm gonna use the rind of the lemon in my custard sauce, but just a little bit, just a tiny bit. That fresh lemon zest. And then I'll take a little bit of lemon juice, squeeze that in as well. Not much, just a little bit. And then what we do is you make a really, really nice lemon pickle with the rind. Okay, so don't throw that away. Just chop it up, chop it down, mix that with some cardamom, some fresh herbs, some turmeric, put it under salt, and just put it in a jar, and the, the, uh, the, the rind over months becomes really potent, pungent, lemony chutney. So again, no food waste yet. Okay, so we've, we've had waste, and we're not even gonna turn that waste into waste. Okay, so um, we've got the, even these little bits of cheese go in, and the kale we chopped up, that's our sauce. Okay, so my advocacy work with the World Food Programme has been, you know, it's taken me to some amazing places, to Dubai, South Africa, Ethiopia, and, and, and it's been shocking some of the food waste that I've seen and some of the, um, some of the systems that we need to, to either rebuild or rework, or even just be aware of. It, you know, it, it's vital that our food systems grow up a little bit. And it's only gonna grow up if people pay attention to it. So all of these little bits and pieces that you do at home make a big impact at the end of the day. Okay, one minute. So, remembering that old bit of butter that was in that old packet, just pull that butter out now make sure it's a little bit cold from the fridge and put it into your sauce. Not much, just a little bit, but it's gonna make it lovely and silky and smooth. And what I do is I always use the tops of my butter papers, if I'm cooking anything in the oven, as my parchment paper. So, you know, don't waste these either. So, let's just stir that through. That's lovely. And if you wanna make this recipe vegan, you don't need to use the cheese, you don't need to use the butter but the sauce was, was, was already made without the cheese and butter going in it. So it's already delicious, but I just add that extra little bit of texture and flavor, especially from the chefy world. Okay, so let's get this lovely green pasta sauce off. Pasta's almost cooked, plates are ready, cheese is grated. And I'm very excited. This recipe has helped you to uh, focus on food waste more, think about your activism, understand that the Food System Summit is coming and how important the United Nations Association of the USA is with all of its members working towards a, a sort of waste-free food environment. So keep spreading the message, keep supporting, keep activating and keep eating delicious food.
So all there is to do now is to pull out our roasting stalks. Look at that, absolutely perfect. And just like any good chef, on the plate, make sure they're all used up. Crunchy, fennelly, a little bit salty, adding to that. And you know what's great about them is you can just nibble them as an aperitif, something to get the party started. Now, the rest of these I'm gonna nibble as I'm tidying up. Now, thank you so much for watching UNA USA. Bon appétit. That looks incredibly delicious, Chef Dawson. I loved how you used this recipe with ingredients on the brink of becoming food waste as an example of the hashtag Stop the Waste campaign. This is something we can all practice at home in our kitchens. I'm thrilled to continue the discussion of sustainable food and food waste with my next guest, Joshabed Louis-Jean. Joshabed joined the office as the special assistant to the director in August of 2019. She has worked with the WFP since 2010, including positions in the office of the executive director, the emergency division, and government donor relations in the headquarters, as well as field positions in Bangladesh, Southern Sudan, and Afghanistan. Her roles in WFP have included reporting and information management, communications, donor relations, and monitoring and evaluation. She is fluent in English and Haitian Creole, conversational in French, and holds an MA in International Relations from St. John's University at its Rome campus. Before we start our discussion, let's start with a brief video that shows the connection between hunger and conflict. And now I am so pleased to welcome Joshabed Louis-Jean from the UN Food, World Food Program. Thank you so much for joining me, Joshabed. It is so wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much, Dustin. I'm so happy to be joining you. Well, firstly, congratulations to you and to the UN World Food Program for being awarded this year's Nobel Peace Prize. I'd like to start there. How does the Nobel Peace Prize reflect WFP's programs and priorities? And I'd love for you to share with us what the organization has been doing for so many years to combat worldwide hunger. Thanks again, uh, Dustin. Um, so we were all very humbled and extremely honored to receive the world, uh, sorry, the Nobel Peace Prize last year. Um, I know it was a terrific morale boost uh, to our colleagues who are working in program countries, a lot of them in the most remote locations, many of them in the most dangerous duty stations. Um, what we know is that there are about 700 million people in this world that go to bed hungry each night. And so what we're hoping is that the Nobel Peace Prize will allow us a, a newer and bigger platform to help amplify the voices of those 700 million people. And we hope by amplifying their stories and their needs, 
we can then inspire global action from individuals, from communities, corporations, governments, to join WFP in the fight against world hunger. So a little bit about WFP, um, it was established in 1961 as a food aid program under FAO. And in the 60 years since then has morphed into the largest humanitarian organization in the world that focuses on hunger and food security. And it's, it's really a two prong approach when you look at it. So we have on one hand saving lives. So that's WFP and emergencies, be that natural disasters, man-made conflict. If they're slow or sudden onset, the COVID pandemic, WFP is there on the ground in most emergencies, feeding people, populations on the move, people in need. So that's the saving lives portion. The changing lives is really our development resilience portfolio. So for example, WFP is the largest provider of school meals globally. And there's a lot of ways that WFP is using every tool in their toolkit to ensure resilience and capacity building for governments, for communities, and for individuals. And so it's really been six decades of fighting hunger and famine globally. Well, thank you so much for your organization's work on this really important issue. And I so appreciate this for focus on stories. I think oftentimes we get so bogged down by statistics and I really appreciate how it really is centering it around those uh, millions of individuals who we really need to support in this critical issue. Uh, we just saw the video um, showing the direct relationship between hunger and conflict. And you've had significant experience living in, as well as working in a number of hard duty stations. I'm wondering if you can take a moment and share any personal stories of how conflict impacts the food security level of the people that you worked with or you, the people that you lived with. Um, so yeah, a little bit about me. I'm Haitian American, born and raised in New Jersey. Um, I started with WFP in 2010 as an intern at their headquarters in Rome. Then I spent a year in Afghanistan, um, three years in Juba, South Sudan, um, from March 2013 to March 2016, um, then six months in Dhaka, Bangladesh, and then short-term missions in Baghdad and in Dakar, Senegal. So unfortunately, a lot of the places that I've worked with WFP, um, you can see directly the, the link between hunger and conflict. A lot of the times the food insecurity in those locations was not, if not directly driven by co conflict, then conflict was an exacerbating factor. So I'll mm. narrow down on uh, Juba, South Sudan. It was my favorite duty station. I spent three years there. I genuinely hope I get to return one day as a pure tourist. Mm. Um, but when I arrived, it was it was March 2013, and they it was and still is the the world's youngest country. Um, they gained their independence in July 2011, and so when I arrived in March 2013, um, it was still a pretty new country and a, a pretty new operation as a, as a main operation for WFP as opposed to part of the Sudan office. Um, there had been, by the time we arrived at December, there had been um, a lot of good reports showing improvements in, in the food security situation. And then the 15th of December, 2013 happened. I was in Juba when the civil war started. It took all of us by surprise. I, I mean, truly it was shocking to wake up in the morning and hear gunshots in the capital. But what really happened is everybody the, the government, other UN agencies, and specifically WFP shifted in focus to emergencies. So now we have to figure out how to reach these populations who are on the move, who are experiencing new conflict every day from various sides. Um, this was a, a multi-party uh, civil war. It wasn't just government and opposition. So I had the opportunity to join one of the emergency teams that went to um, a field location called Gumaruk. Um, it's in Boma State, it, formerly Jungle State. And while there, I was helping with registration. And this is really like, we, there's nothing, there's, there's very few structures out there. This is not a place where we would normally distribute food, but because of the emergency, we're bringing in helicopters for airdrops and airlifts and emergency teams we helicoptered in. Um, and while there, I, I got a chance to speak to a few of the people as I was registering them. Um, the vast majority were women. 
some of them breastfeeding, many of them accompanied by children, elderly people, differently disabled people that were in their families, in their households before they had to move. And the few that I got to speak with had very similar stories of hiding in marsh and swamp-like swamp conditions and feeding their children and themselves shrubs and water lilies to survive mm -hmm. to the next move. And this is a terrifying situation to be in if for a mother, for a father, for anyone. Mm -hmm. And so you really see that connection between hunger and conflict and how you really can't have peace if there's still hunger. And if there's conflict, I mean, hunger will exist. You know, Josh, thank you so much for bringing that story into this conversation. You know, as you were talking, I'm, I'm reflecting on the relationship between food security and human dignity. And I, I just really appreciate the way in which you framed that for us in this conversation. And I know that, you know, as I was looking into WFP's work, I know that about a third of the food produced for human consumption is lost or wasted, especially in homes. I'm wondering if you can just share a little bit about why this is such a big problem and maybe share about how we can approach it. Yeah, what you say is exactly right. I mean, one third of all the, the food produced uh, for human consumption is uh, is either lost or wasted. And if you, um, it's a huge problem in terms, especially of greenhouse gases. So if you combined the amount of greenhouse gases that are, are emitted because of loss and, and wasted food, it actually would come in third after the US and China. So it's a huge issue. And I wanted to talk a little bit um, about the difference between food waste and food loss. So food loss is what happens along the supply chain between after we harvest and before it arrives um, to our retailers and consumers. So think about um, food being stored improperly in a warehouse and now there's rodents and rats and you can no longer use it or food falling off a truck or not making it into a plane. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about food loss. Food mm. waste is what happens when the food arrives at the retailers. So that's our grocery stores, our supermarkets, our restaurants, and when it arrives in our households, the consumer. So food, you're talking about um, the dignity uh, of, of humans without food. And I think the, the huge issue with food loss and food waste is that this is within our power to change. Hmm. We have 700 million people that are going to bed hungry every night. And on the other hand, we're wasting or losing a third of the food that's made for us. We know that hmm. there's enough food on this planet for all of us. What we need is to increase our respect for the food itself, for the people that produce it, for the natural resources, think land, think water, that goes into producing it, and especially for the people that don't have enough. You know, I really love the way you've taken this large critical issue of hunger that's, you know, rampant in societies all around the world. And I've really zeroed in on individual ways in which we can make a difference in this really critical issue. Um, I'm wondering if you can share a few ways that UNA USA members and UNA USA chapters can help with this extraordinary problem of uh, food waste that you just described? Yes, okay, so I would stress that the importance is to really confront our attitudes and our actions. This is a systematic problem, but it's one that we're all a part of. We're all a part of the food system, even if it's just as the role is of consumer. So what we, what we first need to do is we need to look around at our homes and think about our leftovers, think about the food that's about to expire, think about the scraps that we throw away when we're cooking. Uh, we need to think about the food that we buy at the grocery store. You know, there's a movement about ugly fruit and veg. If we don't purchase that, knowing that it's perfectly good to eat, but it just doesn't look as nice as we want it to, then we're part of that problem. There are other ways that uh, WFP is encouraging um, everyday individuals to join in. Um, so we've seen the tremendous impact that grassroots social media action can take. So I encourage everyone 
to join the hashtag Stop the Waste campaign on social media. I usually use it on Twitter. Um, and so through that, we can amplify the idea of, of us all being um, stewards, good stewards of the earth and of the food that we're given. Another way that you can join in is by using, uh, by downloading the Share the Meal app. So this is really the first app of its kind where you as the, as the user can share a meal with a child in Yemen or a refugee mother in Ethiopia. It's a way to connect us all and to really make us mindful of the fact that though we may have enough, there are many in the world that do not. Josh, but thank you so much for sharing so many ways that the folks listening can get involved in this important issue. And as we close out, I'm just curious, Josh, Bed, what gives you hope if you could just share um, what keeps you motivated to do this work? Um, I am so inspired by your leadership and the work of the organization. I'd love to just end on a place of, of hope. What gives you hope, Josh, Bed? So I would say that what gives me hope is that I have seen success stories with WFP. Um, there are ways uh, in which we're really working to not only stop um, the tide of, of hunger, but also build that resilience. So as I was saying, like school meals is, is one of my favorite programs, one of my favorite tools in WFP's toolkit. Makes a lot of sense, especially if you grew up in the US and you know about reduced uh, school lunches and programs like that we have here. Those same programs are needed across the world. Um, and so when you think about sending a child to school, you wanna give them the best opportunities to, to succeed. And that includes a healthy and nutritious lunch and breakfast at the very least. Um, and then on a more personal note, I have a nephew who's about to turn five and he is my whole world and he gives me all the hope in the world. Um, and I, I just can't imagine a future without hope when I know that this is a future that I'm going to leave to him. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I, I really appreciate your time, your energy, your leadership, and your insights, Josh Bed. In this short conversation, we have heard so many ways in which UNA USA members and chapters can take steps towards mending the gaps that we see in our society. Hearing you talk about the impacts that individuals can make on this critical issue of hunger certainly fills me up with hope and uh, fills me with hope on the impact that UNA USA members all across the country can make on this issue. Thank you so much for your time, Josh Bed. I hope you're taking care and staying safe. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dustin. I hope you're staying safe and warm. <laughs> As you just heard from both Josh Abed and Chef Dawson, there's so much that you can do either through your everyday actions as an individual or through your UNA USA chapter to help eliminate food waste. This past year alone, the World Food Program fed over 100 million people around the world. We need your assistance to support WFP in continuing this important work. Text WFP to 30644, that's WFP, to 30644 to urge your members of Congress to allocate the necessary resources to properly fund the work of the World Food Program and other UN agencies addressing global hunger. I also hope that you'll also consider joining the United Nations Association of the USA. Our members across the country care deeply about achieving a zero hunger future. I know that the young people that I've met have the same hopes and aspirations. To join now, please text UNAUSA to 30644, visit unausa.org slash join, or click on the link found in the chat box. Thank you so much for joining us for this important and inspiring demo and discussion. Hope you're taking care and staying safe. The thesis for Schwarzman Scholars was let's bring people from around the world, sort of the best and the brightest concept, and have them learn about China. 
go on trips around the country, meet people there, and be able to go back to their country and explain what's really happening in China. Over time, we'll be raising generations of young people who have come to know each other. They will form lifelong friendships, lifelong friendships that will carry into adult life. They will learn from each other, and you can't help but believe that that kind of interaction will make for better relations. It's kind of crazy to think of how different we are, what kind of backgrounds we come from, what countries we come from. Many late night conversations that sort of illustrate trying to bridge those gaps and really understand each other in a really personal and new way. Ten, fifteen, twenty years from now, there will be a meeting of government officials, and at that table,、uh, someone will have been a Schwarzman scholar. We were disrupted overnight when the pandemic hit China. We had to get our scholars out. We got them to safety. But Schwarzman scholars have just stepped up and created a whole world of their own, including what we're doing for them academically. Let everybody file in. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, great. I think we are all set to go. Now I have this office set up with standing desk. Academically, I've studied topics I would have never had a chance to encounter in other academic contexts. That's what I think is really unique about Schwarzman—the level of access that we get to some of the top、uh, thinkers and leaders in the world. To see China, experience it, the dynamism, the continual change around some core strategic principles is sort of a must-do. Welcome to the 2021 UNA USA Engagement Summit. So glad you're here. Hello, my name is Mark Vogel, Artistic Director of International Voices Houston, a multicultural choir comprised of singers of over 35 different nationalities. Our chorus was originally affiliated with the United Nations Association Houston chapter. In fact, UNA Houston was the only UNA to have such a choir. Our music celebrates diversity and the world cultures from which our performers come. Our choir's mission is to create global harmony by celebrating and giving voice to human difference, and so we are honored to appear today at your global engagement summit as the work of UNA USA feels right in tune with our own work toward multicultural understanding, the promotion of diversity, and world peace. We live in a world in need of healing. And so today we offer a song of peace, sung in several different languages, including Latin, French, Mandarin, and Hindi. This is Dona Nobis Pacem. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you. 